Deadly maelstrom lurks off Norway's coast, the world's most powerful whirlpool. Welcome to the channel of Amazing Facts. We publish new videos every day, so be sure to check back to see new facts that will make you smarter and more knowledgeable. Please subscribe to us and follow up for a news. Don't forget to share the channel with your friends. For more than two millennia now, an astonishing event has regularly manifested off the coast of Norway. Four times each and every day, a set of vortices open up in the waters of the county of Nordland. And according to experts, the phenomenon is the most powerful occurrence of its kind. A little over six miles away from the Nordland region is known as Bodo. A strait called Saltstraumen lies between two fjords. These are called Saltfjorden and Skærstadfjord. In simple terms, a fjord is a slim section of water formed by a glacier which is wedged between two cliffs. Measuring just under 2 miles in length and 940 feet in width, the South Strauman Strait is by no means considered large. Yet even so, every 6 hours, around 110 billion gallons of water surge through it. It's therefore known to possess one of the most powerful currents anywhere in the world. The water traveling through the South Strauman Strait can attain tremendous speeds of almost 23 miles per hour. And when the currents there are at their most significant, a series of swirling tunnels materialize in the water. These long, briny spirals are what we refer to as whirlpools or maelstroms. A whirlpool occurs when the direction or course of underwater currents is disrupted. Basically, it manifests as a spiral of spitting water which can appear to resemble a sort of downward passageway. We can actually see smaller examples of whirlpools when water from the bath travels down the drain. A maelstrom is simply the term used for the more forceful whirlpools which can materialize in oceans. It's apparently a Nordic phrase which itself might have derived from the Dutch word maelstrom, translating to crushing current. It may also have roots in the Swedish language where the word maelstrom translates roughly as grinding current. For English speakers, however, the word maelstrom first appeared in a short story by acclaimed author Edgar Allan Poe. Published in 1841, a descent into the maelstrom appeared within a title known as Graham's Magazine. Poe himself actually served as the editor of the magazine for a time. In A Descent into the Maelstrom, a man recalls his terrible experiences having come across a gargantuan whirlpool. The character is apparently aged prematurely due to his encounter and expresses great terror at the memory of it. The story was supposedly inspired by a real-life complex of whirlpools called the Moskstraumen, which is actually located near Saltstraumen. In the same century as a descent into the maelstrom, a number of other stories appeared which referenced whirlpools. Indeed, ten years after the 1841 publication of Poe's story came Herman Melville's Moby Dick and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by French author Jules Verne was published in 1870. Maelstroms, however, have been a source of great curiosity for far longer than a mere few centuries. In fact, even some of the myths of ancient Greece have touched upon the notion of these vortices. And we can see this if we consider the monstrous entity known as the Charbdis. One telling of the myth of Charbdis presents the figure as the daughter of the gods Gaia and Poseidon. Gaia, on the one hand, is presented as being the goddess of Earth, whereas Poseidon is described as the deity of the sea and was therefore said to look after sailors. According to legend, Poseidon was once embroiled in a conflict with his brother, the deity known as Zeus. Charbdis entered the fray on the side of her father and aided him in covering some lands with water. This angered Zeus, who then took Charbdis and condemned her to the bottom of the ocean. A curse then befell Charbdis, which saw her transform into a great hulking water monster. Now described as a hideous creature with flippers, she perpetually drank the waters of the sea. And according to the myth, this act of drinking led to the formation of whirlpools in the ocean. Greek mythology further also claims that Charbdis lived very close to another vicious sea creature known as the Cycla, a sort of rock monster. Cycla was also a threat to sailors, just like Charbdis. Therefore, danger lurks when veering too closely to either one of them. The legend of these two monsters actually led to the creation of a popular idiom between Cycla and Charbdis. 
this basically relates to deciding on a course of action when given a choice between two undesirable options in other words does one travel the oceans by passing close to deadly rocks or a whirlpool so it seems that whirlpools have managed to capture the imaginations of storytellers throughout the millennia yet even though they're often the cause of huge levels of destruction in these tales in reality they're much more tame but that's not to say that they aren't a threat to smaller craft or swimmers passing nearby for instance French Pass is a body of water that lies between the two main islands of New Zealand the currents there are famously strong and are even capable of overwhelming fish into a daze and in the year 2000 they were actually responsible for the deaths of a number of people a group of students had been swimming through the pass as part of a scuba diving expedition however some got caught up in the pull of the tides and then got drawn into a whirlpool the maelstrom reportedly dragged them some 292 feet underwater and resulted in several of the divers deaths elsewhere a group of documentary filmmakers in Scotland explored the potential dangers to human life caused by whirlpools indeed the focus of their curiosity was the Cory Vrecken whirlpool this has been claimed as one of the top three biggest whirlpools found on the whole of planet Earth the Cory Vrecken whirlpool as its name might suggest is located within the Gulf or Strait of Cory Vrecken this stretch of water lies in the middle of two islands called Scarba and Jura these islands in turn are in the sea just west of the shores of the Scottish mainland the name of this Gulf derives from the Gaelic term Cor Brecken possible translations for the term include cauldron of the plaid and cauldron of the speckled seas according to Scottish legend this Gulf is where a deity named Calic Brewer used to clean an item of clothing apparently the great roar from the Cory Vrecken whirlpool is audible around 10 miles from its source and a sailing manual titled Admiralty sailing directions west coast of Scotland pilot has referred to the waters there as being very violent and dangerous moreover the book warns that no vessel should attempt this passage without local knowledge yet in any case the documentary makers wanted to reach their own conclusions regarding the threat of the whirlpool and so they tossed a life jacket wearing dummy carrying a device for measuring depth into the Gulf and the dummy was very quickly sucked into the vortex the dummy later appeared along the shore the life jacket it seemed had been powerless against the strength of the maelstrom the group then studied the findings recorded by the depth measuring device and they found that the dummy had been pulled around 860 feet underwater this rather informal experiment illustrates how dangerous a maelstrom is for human beings caught in its pull however the lethal hazards of these water vortices are quite limited but when a whirlpool is created by humans the consequences can actually prove far more devastating back in November 1980 a group of oil workers under contract with Texaco were working on Lake Pinure in Louisiana due to a positioning error the workers accidentally drilled into the wrong place and thereby initiated a disaster the mistake created a void at the bottom of the lake and the waters flooded into it the drainage of the lake's waters into the hole created by the workers resulted in an enormous maelstrom the whirlpool then managed to drag 11 barges multiple trees surrounding land and even the drilling platform itself underwater somehow though there were no human fatalities but a number of dogs reportedly weren't so lucky yet despite rare disasters such as the one on Lake Pinure the vast majority of maelstroms are natural occurrences and examples of the phenomena are visible in waters the world over in North America for instance two particularly large examples exist just off the coast of Canada Old Sow is a massive whirlpool in the water between Canada's Deer Island and Moose Island in the US state of Maine it apparently forms a vortex which can measure up to around 250 feet across the name Old Sow reportedly derives from the fact that the noise coming from the maelstrom sounds like a pig meanwhile whirlpools also materialize in the Skookumchook Narrows a strait in Canada's Sunshine Coast region the currents created there are capable of reaching speeds more than 18 miles per hour the consequent rapids are in turn thought by some to be the world's quickest the largest natural whirlpool on earth however is said to be Norway's Saltstraumen maelstrom this is actually a complex of multiple whirlpools which appear together and morph into and away from one another the strait itself is over 2,000 years old the result of a geographical event in the wake of glacial activity 
The South Straumen Strait joins Norway's Skjærstad Fjord together with Saltfjorden. The current for which the strait is famous happens when the tidal forces attempt to fill in the Skjærstad Fjord. Tides, in effect, are the changes in sea level which occur because of the moon's gravitational pull. So, in other words, the strength of the current at South Straumen depends on the phase of the moon. If the satellite appears large in the sky, then the current will be at its most powerful and spectacular. Therefore, the best time to observe the natural maelstrom is during a full moon. For those looking to observe the South Straumen maelstrom, however, it can be difficult to time it correctly. Arriving around a full moon is a good start, of course, but the specific times of its appearance can fluctuate. On the other hand, it shows up four times each day, so it's not exactly rare. The South Straumen maelstrom is apparently visible from the edge of nearby land. The optimum place to catch a glance of the phenomenon, however, would probably be from somewhere above it. Thankfully, there's no need for flying equipment to achieve this perspective, as it can be provided by the South Straumen Bridge. First opened back in 1978, the South Straumen Bridge connects two Norwegian islands, which are known as Strayoma and Naplunsoya. The pre-stressed concrete structure measures up to 2,520 feet in length and 37 feet in width. It's made up of 10 individual spans, the longest of which is reportedly 520 feet long. The South Straumen Bridge gives curious tourists the chance to catch a glimpse of this powerful natural occurrence. And a number of companies located in the area offer boat tours to allow for sea level perspective of the phenomenon. Yet the Salt Straumen Maelstrom is an attractive prospect for more than just inquisitive human beings. The conditions present at the Salt Straumen Strait have, in fact, attracted an abundance of plankton. This is defined as a group of generally small water based organisms which act as food for larger creatures. The presence of plankton in a body of water can, in turn, cause large numbers of fish to inhabit the area. The large quantities of fish in South Straumen have made the region a popular fishing spot today. But the area seemingly has a history of the tradition, as evidenced by the discovery of an ancient human settlement there. It seems that people once inhabited the lands close to the sea, perhaps drawn there by the numerous fish. So the South Straumen Strait and its surrounding areas possess an extremely rich history, stretching back many thousands of years. But ultimately, the most compelling aspect of the area is the tremendous maelstrom which comes into being there every day. And though it might not be as dramatic as the maelstroms of mythology, it's nonetheless capable of inspiring genuine awe.